Hi, I'm Shikha Laluria, Professor of Biochemistry at the Indian Institute of Science. Welcome to this lecture, which is about the role of SMC proteins in chromosome organization, which is part of the course on cell biology, cellular organization, division and processes. How is it that a nearly 2 meters long DNA molecule can fit within a tiny nucleus having a diameter of only 5 or 10 microns? This is the conundrum that we will discuss today. Packaging of DNA with histones to form nucleosome arrays that further fold into a 30 nanometer fiber condenses DNA to a certain extent. But there are additional levels of folding of chromatin as well. So today we will discuss a class of non-histone proteins which are involved in higher order chromosome organization. Additional levels of higher order chromosome organization are seen in uh, these chromosomes which are entering mitosis. Uh, shown here are the changes in the chromosome organization that occur as the cell enters mitosis and it reaches metaphase uh, at which point the chromosomes are maximally condensed. So how does this happen? And uh, also all these structural changes in the chromosomes are very important for uh, their accurate segregation. This is a time lapse of mitosis by Jeremy Pickett Heaps, contributed by Drew Berry. In this, we can see chromosomes are condensing and forming these rod like compact metaphase chromosomes that are aligned at the equatorial plane. And uh, after all the sister chromatids are aligned, they uh, undergo the metaphase to anaphase transition, and the chromosomes have separated and moved forward. The chromosomes are now decondensed. And this is followed by cytokinesis, resulting in two daughter cells. So these structural transitions are crucial for accurate chromosome segregation. The question is, how does this happen? The transition from the 30 nanometer chromatin to the metaphase chromosome probably uh, involves formation of loops and then uh, even their further folding. A conserved family of proteins, the SMC proteins, are important for this transition. Shown here is a metaphase spread of human chromosomes showing the maximally condensed state of mitotic chromosomes. Note the cohesion between the sister chromatids. Uh, that is along their length they appear to be paired and this cohesion is more intimate or close at the primary constriction region uh, which is where the centromere is located. Also note the high level of condensation that has occurred in these chromosomes to convert the sister chromatids into this egg-shaped rod-like configuration. Both of these structural attributes condensation as well as cystochromated cohesion are dependent on SMC protein complexes and both of them are very important for accurate segregation of chromosomes during mitosis. Shown here is a schematic of a typical SMC protein complex. Now SMC stands for structural maintenance of chromosomes. And these proteins are conserved in eukaryotes as well as prokaryotes. Uh, they are very important in terms of function. For example, in yeast, they are essential for viability of the cells. They have an ATP binding head domain, a flexible coiled coil region, and a hinge region. And uh, these proteins, they dimerize with another SMC partner to usually form a heterodimer and they dimerize at the hinge region. The head domains of these two SMC proteins are bridged by a non-SMC glycine subunit. 
uh, which is called MCD1 or SCC1 or even RAT21 in budding yeast. Non-SMC subunits here uh, are of course SCC1, MCD1 or RAT21, the glycine subunit and also the SCC3 or SA proteins. There are other regulatory factors associated with cohesin such as WAPL1 uh, and PDS5 and this complex and also the other SMC complexes are also regulated by post-translational modifications of various subunits uh, such as acetylation in case of cohesin by ECO1, somylation and phosphorylation. The SMC protein complexes bind DNA. They associate with DNA and they are involved in many important DNA transactions due to the inherent DNA binding and tethering abilities. Each SMC protein has got a hinge region and two coiled coiled regions which connect the hinge to the walker a and the walker b motifs this molecule then folds up upon itself at the hinge and the two walker a and walker b uh, motifs they come together and they form the head domain that can bind atp and has atps activity the smc proteins can associate by the hinge region and their head domains as I already mentioned are bridged by this glycine subunit uh, and uh, this therefore closes the ring uh, formed by this complex. Shown here are three of the conserved SMC complexes in eukaryotes. The cohesin complex, the condensin complex and the as yet unnamed SMC56 complex. A cartoon of the SMC monomer is shown at the top that folds and it associates uh, with another SMC at the hinge in the complex. So each of the SMC complexes has got two different SMC proteins forming a heterodimer and additional non-SMC subunits. A cohesin has got two main uh, non-SMC subunits, condensin has three, whereas the SMC56 complex has got six non-SMC subunits. Cohesin was first identified based on its requirement for the process of sister chromatid cohesion in budding yeast mitosis. Budding yeast yeast mutants which were defected in MCD1, the glycine subunit of cohesin, showed cohesion as well as condensation defects by fluorescent in situ hybridization analysis of budding yeast chromosomes. Now we know that one of its main roles is to hold the two sister chromatids together until uh, the metaphase to the anaphase transition. At the metaphase to anaphase transition, MCD1, this purple subunit shown here, is cleaved by an enzyme named separase. And uh, this cleavage opens up the ring and the two sister chromatids can move apart, they can come apart. This results in the dissolution of sister chromatid cohesion and uh, in anaphase now the two sister chromatids they can move apart they were already attached to microtubules coming from opposite poles so uh, they move towards the poles as well and thus chromosome segregation happens. The cohesin subunits are SMC1, SMC3, and then MCD1 or SCC1, and SCC3. All the subunits are essential and conserved. 
this complex is of course very important for sister chromatid cohesion but it also has roles in mitotic chromosome condensation in dna double strand break repair in gene expression and also in replication this complex subunits are stimulated by mms21 or nse2 which is a subunit of the smc56 complex defects in the cohesion subunits or their loading factors can result in severe developmental defects in humans highlighting the importance of its function even in multicellular organisms in development so when cohesin was first discovered we asked the question where does cohesin bind to chromosome because this was not known at all for this we employed a technique termed chromatin immunoprecipitation or chip in which one of the components of cohesin mcd1 was immunoprecipitated from shear formaldehyde cross link chromatin from e cells so in this method that is in chromatin immunoprecipitation uh, chromatin is cross linked first using formaldehyde and then it is fragmented and then a dna binding protein specific antibody uh, which will be an antibody to your protein of interest is used to pull down that protein and its associated dna sequences then the cross links are reversed and the dna is purified and then this dna uh, which co-ip with your uh, chromosomal protein can be analyzed by a number of methods such as qpcr microarray hybridization or even next generation sequencing and uh, the dna sequences which are found to be enriched in the immunoprecipitates represent the binding sites of the dna binding protein of interest in vivo so to identify the sequences to which cohesin binds in yeast cells um, one of the components of cohesin mcd1 was immunoprecipitated from sheared formaldehyde cross linked chromatin um, by the way this experiment was done by me uh, several years ago and uh, we observed the selective enrichment of some sequences but not of others in the mcd1 chromatin immunoprecipitates so thus we identified specific sequences to which cohesin binds in yeast cells and we named these sequences as cohesin associated regions or cars uh, in analogy with sars and mars which are other previously identified putative dna elements that are thought to be determinants of higher order chromosome structure now uh, cars on yeast chromosome show a conserved periodicity of uh, 8 to 10 kilobases um, we could find cohesin binding sites within the repetitive rdna locus there was one site in each ribosomal dna repeat and we observed that uh, cohesin was bound to most of the repeats that is most of the rdna repeats were occupied there was higher binding near the centromere and there was lower binding near the telomeres uh, the sites that we identified were quite broad and their breadth was about 800 to 1500 kilobases for different cars and we also found that most of them were located in intergenic regions and their distribution sort of correlated with at rich regions and this distribution has been depicted in this diagram of the chromosome where you can see that in the pericentric region or near the centromere there is more binding and also there is binding at 
every few kilo bases along the arms. And of course, I already mentioned that the binding sites near the ends of chromosomes appear to be relatively uh, weak. This is one of the current models of how the cohesin ring might hold the two sister chromatids together. Uh, this might be by encircling these two DNA molecules which can pass through the hole in this ring as is shown here to bring about cohesion. So uh, at the metaphase phase transition if you recall uh, cleavage of this subunit opens up the ring and the DNA molecules can slip out. So this is one of the current models which is in vogue trying to explain how cohesin brings about cohesion. This image shows the localization of cohesin. Cohesin is shown in yellow on the condensed chromosomes which are depicted in red. And uh, cohesin here in this uh, figure, it seems to have an actual localization on the chromosome which is consistent with its known functions uh, in cohesion and condensation. Although cohesin was first identified by its requirement for sister chromatid cohesion in a screen for mutants that were defective in sister chromatid uh, cohesion, these mutants were referred to as PDS mutants, precocious dissociation of sisters during mitosis. We now know that cohesin has several other functions as well. Cohesin is also important for mitotic chromosome condensation. Uh, it's also required for DNA double strand break repair by homologous recombination. It's also important for DNA replication. In fact, cohesin was shown to be speeding up the progression of the replication fork. Cohesin is also important for gene expression and for silencing barrier activity. Silencing barriers are sequences that can limit the spread of silencing coming from a silencer or silencing initiator sequence. And uh, these sequence indeed are present in eukaryotic cells and it has been found that their barrier activity or boundary activity is dependent on cohesin. The condensin complex has SMC2, SMC4 and three non-SMC subunits cap H, cap D2 and cap G. All the subunits again in yeast at least are essential and also they are conserved. It's important for mitotic chromosome condensation. Uh, in addition, the condensin complex also has roles in cohesion, in RDNA stability and also uh, silencing at the ribosomal DNA in telomere silencing and in tRNA gene clustering within the nucleus. Vertebrates have got two different condensin complexes and defects in condensin subunits uh, can result in a developmental defect in humans, for example, primary microcephaly. So condensin has been shown to be required not only for condensation, but also cohesion, RDNA stability, ribosomal DNA silencing, telomere silencing, tRNA gene clustering within the nucleus. I think we already mentioned this. Condensation and resolution of cystochromatids depend on the condensin complex. Like cohesin, condensin may also form a ring-like structure and bring about intramolecular 
interactions um, in a DNA molecule forming a loop to help in condensation. So here also there is a Claisen subunit cap H which bridges the two head domains of SMC2 and SMC4 and also the head domains can bind and hydrolyze ATP. Condensin can change the coiling state of DNA in vitro which is also stimulated by MCDK and also it can bring about loop extrusion in vitro. These properties of condensin may help in chromosome reorganization by the condensin complex in mitosis. The SMC56 complex has SMC5 and SMC6 as its SMC subunits and it also has six non-SMC subunits NSC1 through 6. All of these subunits again are essential and conserved and uh, one interesting feature of this complex is that it has got additional enzymatic activities. In fact, two of its subunits, NSC2 or in budding yeast it's also known as MMS21 and NSC1 have E3 ligase activity. So NSC2 or MMS21 is a sumo E3 ligase and it sumoylates several chromosomal proteins. In fact, several of the SMC proteins are sumoylated by NSC2. Whereas NSC1 has been shown uh, to have ubiquitin ligase activity in humans. The SMC56 complex also is being studied a lot and uh, it has numerous functions. It's important for repair. It also has roles in DNA double strand break repair by sister chromatid recombination mediated homologous recombination. It's important for replication fork stability and also for telomere clustering and the peripheral localization of telomeres and also it's important for stability of repetitive DNA in cells. The SMC56 complex also is important for meiosis. Nevertheless, a lot more still needs to be learned about this intriguing complex, the SMC56 complex and also uh, a lot needs to be still learned about the SMC family of proteins and a lot of scientists including my own lab are working towards solving these problems. Thank you.